Here we go again, another video about the current state of New World. If you've been following along with the recent coverage on YouTube, Twitch, social media in general, you should know roughly what to expect here. New World by Amazon Game Studios should never have released this year, perhaps not even until late 2022 or even 2023. And I'm not just going to use this video to discuss the current issues plaguing the game, although I will have to outline some of them for context. I'm going to explain why New World is broken, why it might not get fixed for a long time, and who's to blame for the game being the way that it is. Now this isn't to say if you're enjoying New World that you're wrong and that you shouldn't be having fun playing the game or that you deserve to be ridiculed for enjoying it. I've seen a lot of this sentiment on social media in the last week or two, people laughing about others enjoying the game, and I don't agree with that sentiment at all. I do however think most people at this stage can agree New World has rot in the core. There is clearly issues that are so deeply woven into the game's code that the developers are basically just piling on fuel to the fire that is currently raging when they're trying to patch these issues one at a time on a live service game that is currently running and being played by millions of players. New World went through one of the most intensive testing phases of any MMORPG in recent history. They had tens of thousands of different people invited to test the game throughout alpha and beta phases for multiple years. They had multiple large scale testing events that they called previews. And during those testing phases, many of the bugs that we're seeing in the live released game today were reported. Some of them are identical, others are so similar that whatever band-aid fix Amazon Game Studios implemented came off somewhere along the way during other changes or just changed how the bug could be replicated very, very slightly. Not all of these bugs are game breaking, but some of them have helped to derail the competitive element of New World, which plays a massive factor in how the game works for everybody else, whether they realize it or not. Simple things like gear, talent, skills, or even items are doing things that they should not be doing, or they're doing nothing at all. Some are stronger than they should be, and some just don't work. The guilds and players who knew about these issues and these specific items have been using these things to gain massive advantages in competitive PvP, allowing for them to accumulate and snowball wealth through the war systems. Things that are quite simple on surface level, like PvP gear stating that it grants a flat percentage reduction in critical hit damage, but actually provides a flat damage reduction overall, which gives you an absolutely huge advantage in the game. This is something that's been going on since day one of launch, and that is one of the least harmful things that has been used to gain advantages. Multiple exploits involving making your character invulnerable, multiple exploits making the server lag during wars to give you an advantage, servers or wars lagging without exploits just making them completely unplayable, gold duplications being introduced into the game via character transfers, and whenever Amazon Game Studios puts out a fix for a bug, they seemingly create a handful of additional bugs that range from silly to game breaking. An example of this is about three days ago during a patch they made movement so bugged that half the people on my server were gliding around or floating on the spot permanently in just weird animations. And an example in the same patch that I would consider to be game breaking and not just silly is that they managed to make the auction house stop sending people gold for items that they'd sold if their character was offline when the item was sold. On top of this, during the same patch, they managed to break almost all magic abilities in the game. Right now, there's a fairly high chance that when you play, if you cast an ability from a Fire Staff or an Ice Gauntlet, you won't do any damage at all. And if you do, if it's a ticking ability, it might do one tick and then just stop doing damage completely. And the sad thing is, these bugs pale in comparison to what else is going on, and it only gets worse from here. In the last week, there have been a handful of new dupes discovered that do not rely on character transfer methods or RNG in any way. They're very easy to replicate. And in an attempt to fix these dupes, Amazon Game Studios disabled all forms of player wealth transfer, meaning you cannot send gold to each other or trade. Unfortunately, while doing this, they introduced another form of duping gold that you can do without even meaning to. If you own a territory and start a town upgrade, your gold doesn't get taken from you and the upgrade does not start. But when you reconnect to the game, you're gonna find that your company account has been credited the amount that the upgrade would have cost. Meaning if you do try to upgrade things, you just generate gold out of thin air. Now, of course, this is gonna be a bannable offense. Assuming that Amazon Game Studios can find who's responsible for doing this maliciously and weed them out from the people who did it accidentally, find all the gold from each one of the five or so dupes that have been used in the last 10 or so days, remove all that from the economy, remove all the items from the economy, not introduce any more issues, which seems to be the case every time they fix something, 
and not falsely ban people. But here comes another issue that is going to make this such a colossal clusterfuck that it's hard to believe it can actually be done. You can make multiple accounts on New World with a single purchase of the game on Steam, and you can use those to dupe gold, you can use them to exploit, you can use them to store duped items or gold, and you can do that to add to the layer of other ways you can filter through ill-gotten gains within an MMORPG. Now I'm not going to explain how to do it, but suffice to say you can have multiple Steam accounts piggyback off a single purchase of New World, and thus create many alternate accounts to use for botting, duping, or any number of other activities you would wish to remain separate from your main account. On top of that, people are abusing consumables, passive abilities, and more to make them kill you in one or two hits with certain weapons in all areas of the game. In general, New World is currently suffering from so many critical bugs and exploits that it's hard to imagine how they can recover from this. Now again, since this sometimes gets lost in translation when you're talking about something in a critical manner, if you're still enjoying the game, if you haven't noticed any of these things, if you think these things are not going to affect you or impact your gameplay at all, if you're just somebody who logs on for a couple hours every now and again, goes and does some crafting, some quests, some gathering or whatever, plays the game very casually, you're unlikely to even see or care about any of these issues. You can still play the game and have fun, and I believe many people are still doing that. That, however, does not mean that these issues are not a big deal, especially when you look at why they exist. So let's use an overly long metaphor for what I see happening to New World right now. If you've ever heard the idiom about closing the stable door after the horse has bolted, it seems like Amazon Game Studios saw a few horses bolt out of the stable, watched them run out of the field and get hit by an 18-wheeler truck, and then instead of closing the stable door to prevent more horses from escaping, or bolting the gate to prevent them running into the road, they're instead running around the field taking a single horse back to the stable, putting it in there, and then going to get the next one without even closing the fucking stable door each time. It seems like every time they fix one thing, they break something else, and then when they fix that, the other thing is broken again. So having described the issues, now let's talk about why these issues exist. One, the engine that they're using, and two, the management involved in this project. Let's talk about management first. The following is from an article on enemy.com, where they interview someone called Christoph Hartmann, who is the vice president at Amazon Game Studios, the second man in charge of the whole operation, underneath the main man himself called Mike Frazzini. Hartman during this particular interview says, and I quote, the key for Amazon's success will lie in being a little more selective in its projects and never shipping a game until it's polished. Meaning that we are to believe based on the vice president of the division's word that the company believed New World was a polished game and ready for release. The same management who also believed Crucible, the only other game to have ever been released by Amazon Game Studios, was also polished enough to release, the game that they paid a bunch of streamers to play for three days before it dropped to less than 100 players within a month, and then pulled it back into beta, and then of course cancelled the project a few months later. He also says, and I quote again, So far, we haven't had a lot of complaints about the game, in reference to New World's release. Bear in mind this interview was posted on the 26th of October 2021, during which time there had already been dupes discovered, sieges were being lagged out intentionally, half the endgame's content didn't even work, it was disabled, including the Azoth staff for level 55 and 65, the outpost rush, as well as multiple articles and hundreds of social media posts circulating about people being banned due to an automated system from in-game mass reports. So there are more choice quotes in this article, as well as another interview that in context gets even more ridiculous, which we might go over in another video. But next, let's talk about an article that Jason Schreier put out in January 2021. That article was titled, Amazon can make everything except a good video game. In that article, which I did cover in depth on my channel, which I do suggest you go check it out, it's in the video description, it's never been more relevant than it is now, you can look back with hindsight and see exactly what to expect. Jason interviewed Amazon Game Studio staff. The consensus of the article is that the management have no clue what they're doing, and they forced the studio to use technology that is not in any way fit for purpose. The employees hate Lumberyard. They do not want to use it, and it is allegedly terrible for what they want to do. I have personal testimony from other sources that are not related to this article that confirm this. The staff also cannot stand the management, in particular, Mike Frazzini is seen as clueless about game development, and he's just there since he's a long-time employee of Amazon, going back to the bookstore days with the main man Jeff Bezos himself. On top of this, and in support of this article talking about Lumbiard and the problems that it has, if this wasn't enough, let's substantiate it more with a public post on Twitter from a man named Jorge Rodriguez, who you can see is confirmed to have worked at Amazon Game Studios. 
In this long thread, which I'm not going to go over in detail again, maybe in the next video we will, he described the issues that have caused the current state of New World, and it stems from the very beginning when Amazon quote, bought CryEngine and built two competing game engines on top of it for internal use. One of which is Lumbyard, which is what New World, Crucible and Breakaway used, which of course for context, Breakaway and Crucible are both cancelled titles that were either released or almost released, so three out of three so far of the titles using this engine have massive problems, two of which had to be cancelled. The reason that they used two forks of Lumbyard according to this tweet chain is so that they could replace basically all of the CryEngine code, but since the teams needed to get to work on games, those three games I just listed were started using some of the existing code, which is called GameCore. According to Jorge, this code was client authoritative, which let us not forget is what people are claiming is giving New World so many issues with invulnerability exploits and dupes, by dragging around the game window in windowed mode while performing certain activities in the game, something that should absolutely not under any circumstances ever be possible in an online game, let alone an MMORPG. For additional context, Amazon Game Studios posted recently saying their game is in fact not client authoritative, and to go into finer detail they say essentially the game isn't client authoritative but there have been certain cases in which some bugs make the game act as if it was. They also say that they tested to make sure when fixing the invulnerability bug that people were doing by dragging a client around, that nothing else bad became of it. But this is allegedly the exact same method in which some people are now duping gold, which indicates something here is not as it seems, and according to the tweet thread from Rodriguez again, he states the following. When faced with a choice between spending millions delaying the game for another year or two versus accepting client authoritative bugs, it's easy to say, quote, okay let's be careful. He also states that the New World devs are not responsible, which is absolutely true. They are doing the best that they can with the hand that they've been dealt. Decisions made during the inception of Amazon Game Studios and New World as a project are to blame here, decisions we can lay firmly at the feet of management. Rodriguez also confirms this and lays the blame firmly at the feet of Frazzini, as do many other insiders who didn't come out publicly in reference to the conversations that I've had privately, as well as the Jason Schreier article from early 2021. All of this correlates. So that's what's broken in New World currently, for today at least. What will be broken tomorrow or the day after is anyone's best guess. They're currently running around putting fires out with buckets of gasoline, and the entire building is on fire. Hopefully this sheds some light on why New World is broken as opposed to just talking about what the issues are. I think this should serve as context as to why New World's future is not as certain as people believe, and how this could be months of issues ranging from bad to worse before it ever gets any better. The issues are not incompetent developers. The issues are much worse than that. If it was just incompetent devs, they could get rid of them and hire new people. The issues is a rotten foundation of code that is not fit for purpose. And when a game like New World has been developed for so long on top of a rotten foundation of code, that is the scary problem. Thank you very much for watching as always, leave a like and a comment to help this video get seen by others, since those are the ways to feed Algorithm Senpai and game to notice me. Subscribe if you did enjoy the video, check out the links in the video description for all my public references that I used in this video if you want to do your own digging. Check the Patreon if you want to throw some coins to MMO Watcher each month, Twitter, Twitch and Discord if you want to keep up on my socials, and I do hope to see you on the next one. Appreciate you all, stay safe out there, we out, peace.